Hey guys, I'm James Hall with Bassmaster Magazine here at John Jones and Luckout Ranch Pond Lake Management Crew. And we are here for an update on Lake Why. Why. I'm so freaking excited about this because, let's see, uh, it's been a hot minute. When was the last time that y'all were out? Uh, I personally was out in the fall when we brought in a truckload of bluegill. Okay, so it's been about 12 months uh, since y'all put in a giant load of bluegill. And one of the one of the um, opportunities that you that you determined out here at Lake Y was to increase the forage base. And so uh, that you did, that you did. I, it was a, I don't know, 30,000 bluegill or something that we put in here. It was a tremendous number, I don't even recall, but yeah. it, it was a truck full. Higher, more more than I can count. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna be doing the first survey since we we put those bluegill in here, and I'm kind of wondering what your expectations are. I have no idea to what to expect, but as far as expectations after putting that much forage in, like why? What do you think we're gonna see today? Well, we're certainly going to see more bluegill in the lake. Uh, I know there's been some challenges since then. There's been a large flood, big enough to uh, cause currents and forage to go downstream. So I'm excited and have a little bit of trepidation of what that's going to do. But that's why we survey. We have to look to see what's happening. Okay, and then the last survey was about a year ago. <clears throat> and, uh, and as far as uh, a, a percentage of increase, is there, is there a baseline that we're hoping for before we get out there uh, based on our last survey 12 months ago? I'd like to see at least twice as much bluegill and forage overall that we saw last time and I'd like okay. to see the average weight of the fish up a few percentage points. Okay up a few percent well that's what we're going to shoot for. Uh, again I'm I love watching this process. Yeah. <laughs> it's the most exciting thing to see uh to see those fish come up and then the measure and and get some results. So let's hop out on a boat and uh, do the fun part. All right let's do it. All right, John, we're about halfway uh, through the survey now, and it looks a lot different than what we saw last time we surveyed. What have you seen so far? Well, you know, like I always tell you, a uh, survey is just a snapshot. And so to get a good picture, you need a lot of snapshots. Um, quick kind of gut feelings right now, the bluegill numbers have surpassed what I thought they would do. We uh, stocked a lot of bluegill of all different sizes, but it's amazing the difference here. Uh, there's not a single piece of submerged weeds that's not covered with bluegill. Thick, thick. thick. Absolutely. I mean, and just a billion of them about, about yay. Yeah, the it's good just, size, you yeah, know. So you don't exciting. only want to have big bluegill. Mm -hmm. and, so, and we put in copper nose, and you can see the, the copper nose, the change here from native bluegill to copper nose. What I've seen uh, is that you know, this is on a, a large watershed, and, and um, you certainly can see a change in water quality. You can see the creek, if you would, influences on the lake. The water quality from a fish production standpoint seems to be down today, and I've gathered that there's been some pretty significant flooding. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing a little bit of sores on some of the fish, and generally that's related to uh, water quality that's not optimal. Uh, but the, the bait number's up, uh, the bass number's up. I'm not sure on the bass weights yet. Certainly uh, young of the year bass are up, and, and um, but the, the water color is, is less desirable compared mm -hmm. to my last visit, uh, mm -hmm. less weeds. Um, the mud is even, uh, I use the word fluffy, it suspends easily and when our prop hits it you can see the, the mud trail behind us for 30 minutes or so and it seems to be even more so after that flood. So mm -hmm. uh, as always it's a mixed bag but I'm excited about weighing the fish. We have a, a great live well of fish mm -hmm. and um, great data set. This will be the most fish we've shocked per hour since we've been on this sure. in this project. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm excited. Well, let's uh, let's get them measured and weighed and see what we got. And uh, I don't know if we might do a little bit more surveying, get another part we have, of the lake. Yeah, we've got another half of the lake, All your right. favorite side. <laughs> yeah, that's right, the yeah. good side. Exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm excited. Four. Two. We'll call them 14 and a half. Actually, 
14. All right, so we just finished up our survey. Um, we're gonna start working through the fish. We're gonna get some weights, some measurements, get some data uh, recorded. So we'll start with the first one. You ready? 18 and a half. Three point one. What should that fish weigh? Three point five. Three point five. So the fish is actually in pretty decent health. It, it's a little underweight right now, but overall the the thickness of the tail is good. Um, I think this fish is 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 gonna put on some weight here this fall and, and be a lot better here. But we'll let this one go. Uh, in ponds, you're in, a, you're in a fixed environment. There's only so many predatory fish per acre that you can have in a body of water. And with a pond, you need to practice some harvest. I know it's contradictory to a lot of, of what we hear about catch and release, but what happens is if you, if you don't ever take any bass out, you'll end up with too many. Um, and a lot of times you end up with too many the same exact size. So you'll notice if you're fishing a pond, you start catching fish and they're all 12 inches. You don't catch any bigger than that. Uh, and that's a sign that there's a, a overpopulation. If you have too many of a certain size, they eat all the same size bait fish. Once they eat your forage population down, there's not enough to support the fish and they don't grow anymore, basically. Uh, and so to correct that, you know, we remove fish from the population if needed, uh, restock bait fish, and, and we try to turn it around where they start growing again. Um, something interesting about a bass is that they do stunt their growth. So if they don't have enough to eat, they can survive on, on very little. They just won't grow. Uh, so a bass can stunt it, become stunted at any size and at any age. So we, we've seen bass uh, that are uh, 10 to 12 inches long that are seven years old. They've been that same size uh, for most of their life. Keep him um, one eight. That's really good. At least 30% over. Wow. So. I hate that stuff on the land. Oh, come on. Three five. I got a few things in him. Little parasites in the fins. Okay, so during the survey, as they're, as they're going through these fish, what we've noticed is that some of them have this scary looking red, white, fungi looking thing on it, and it scares me to death. Uh, so can you talk to us about whether, you know, what this is, how, how it got here, is it gonna kill my fish, is it going to go away? What's going on with these yeah. crazy sores on these bass? This is something that we see a lot of, uh, especially in months, uh, in the spring or in the fall, uh, during years where we've had a, a big influx of water. Uh, we'll see uh, bacteria counts that get a little bit higher. And, um, you know, you may have fish that get a little bit stressed and they're susceptible to getting infections. Um, it's not gonna hurt the fish in any way. In fact, this fish is actually 30% over its target weight. Uh, we're gonna let him go. He's gonna survive and, and do just fine. As the water temps cool off, uh, the particular type of uh, bacteria is, is gonna um, go away. Uh, the infection is gonna go away and, and he's gonna be just fine. So that's good news. So if y'all see fish like this, they have the crazy sores on your lakes, know that all is not lost. Thankfully, these fish are gonna survive to he's gonna continue be growing. He's gonna be just fine. Oh. We'll, we'll go ahead and let him go. Great news. We got a red ear sunfish here, uh, also known as shell cracker. Uh, these are in the, the uh, lake for mostly the health of the fishery. They eat a lot of snails. Uh, your parasites uh, that can get in the flesh of the, uh, the fish. Generally, it's a, it's a cycle. So it comes from birds. Uh, there's a, a life cycle that's free in the water, then it's in snails. And because these fish eat the snails, they kind of break that life cycle up. And they prevent, if you're to eat the fish or 
they'll prevent the grubs from from being in the the, the flesh of the fish when you clean them all right so uh we finished up uh, weighing and measuring our bass now we're going to look at some less desirable fish that we found in our survey uh, first is going to be this big channel cat uh, most of the time channel cats really aren't a problem uh, but for this lake with the shallowness uh, of the lake a, a large number of catfish is not desirable they're going to uh, stir up the silt uh, which makes uh, it makes managing the pond a, a lot tougher uh, it's hard for uh, for the uh, fish to uh, spawn well when there's a lot of turbidity in the water um, so even though this is most of the time a desirable species for our pond here, this is going to be a less desirable fish. So we've got a, a, a sucker fish. Uh, we're finding quite a few of these are around the edge of the pond. It's another fish that uh, less desirable to have in this pond with the, the management that we're doing. They don't really cause too many problems, but they could add to the turbidity of the pond in high numbers. That gar, where is he? There he is. All right, John. We just all right, James. We, I, so, <laughs> we, so we just finished the survey. Yep, that's fine. And it was, it was. I'm, I'm like kind of jacked up about it because I don't, I don't do numbers. I'm more of a words guy. Mm -hmm. But based on what I saw, it seemed to be pretty positive. I know that we saw so much more bait fish than we did before. It seemed like to me, the bass are getting a little bit bigger. But, but you have the numbers. You you know the numbers that we had from last year when we stocked, and mm -hmm. now you know what we've just what we've just done. So could you share with us the data? It's kind of like a, ah. <laughs> well, I kind of know the numbers. Okay. So I committed a little bit to memory, and I leave the rest uh, for back at the office. But overall, first, we'll go with the wins. The bait, we wanted to see a, a doubling. We saw a lot more than a doubling. Um, you know, we saw what? 20 times the amount of bait. Mm -hmm. um, so bluegill looked fantastic. Um, I say overall, I think the bass numbers um, are going to be up as well as the bass health. We'll know that for sure when we, we put them on to the charts. Um, there was a kind of interesting, you had a very significant um, fall spawn this year. So we saw hundreds, if not thousands of one to three inch bass. Certainly didn't see that. Which was here. crazy. I didn't know that we would have a fall spawn here. But, As a matter of fact, I didn't know that happened in this part of the world at all. So it's kind of a surprise to me. It's interesting, you know, we see it without rhyme or reason, I'd say. We see it on quite a few lakes. Uh, not a high percentage, but, but uh, certainly some. There's some lakes where we see it every year. and. Um, even though this is my life and career, I simply don't know why. <laughs> uh, but you have had a significant fall spawn. Um, so, you know, good news on the bass, great news on the bait. The threadfin shad, you're worried that went out with the, that they may have went with the flood. Not the case. They're still here. Lots of gizzard shad. Um, the medium news, you still have lots of non-game species there. I mean, I think that's that's life on the creek. Um, the, uh, the water call quality I believe has has declined significantly uh, I think that's partly due to the flood whatever happened here we'll find out more about that um, and you can kind of see it in and some of the external characteristics of the fish uh, we can tell by the way the boat shocking but again it'll go to a lab um, the uh, looks like you've gained a little bit more silt that last flood didn't do you any favors in that area uh, but the, the structure piles put out, they work like a charm. And so we got big fish, our biggest fish, I think, came off the structure pile. So uh, a win for that. Hey, way! I'll take every one we can get. So uh, we're going into our third year uh, mm -hmm. with this Lake Y project. And it, uh, from, from the first time you, you saw the lake to today, after that survey, what has been our biggest win so far? The bait. The bait is. I mean, and, and that's the foundation. If you want fat cows, you need lots of green grass. So um, considering our inputs today, uh, where we are today on the bait is 100% a win. All right. And so same same thought, what is our biggest challenge moving forward if we're uh, you know wanting to continue to see these increases in growth for our bass population? Um, that's pretty straightforward. It's going to be the actual construction of the lake. So this lake is a shallow lake. If we improve the water quality we're going to grow a lot of weeds which is going to be undesirable for some of the people out here um, structure we'd like to put structure in that lake where we've done some uh, may consider a kind of a wholesale project where we do a lot 
uh, but being that it's a shallow lake, it's hard to hide that structure. And for some people, sea and structure is undesirable. Not for everybody, but for some, and I recognize that. So I think just getting around how this lake was constructed to begin with is, is our biggest sing single challenge. We're already making progress on the bait. We're making progress on the bass. We're going to make progress on the genetics. Um, but we are still dealt the hand that we're dealt here. Okay. So, uh, you know, almost three years into the Lake Y project, uh, there's uh, still work to do, but we are making strides. And as you've said from the beginning, it's all about the process. It's about patience. And uh, those are things that we have to continue to, like, wrap our arms around. Well, it's slow and steady. You know, you can speed things up, of course, but on a large lake like this, usually... Uh, funds become an issue with that and so picking something that's reasonable and what you really want is each year to be slightly better than the year before and you know it's not a quick fix sort of thing um, and but if you look at all the indicators here overall lakes got better and it's going to continue to get better when you look five or ten years in the future and you look back a little bit every year adds up to a lot that's right all right well that's exciting i'm excited i'm excited about the progress for lake y and uh, folks at home, I hope y'all are getting a lot out of this. I'm learning a lot uh, as we go through this process and continue to tune in to the Lake Y project, uh, both on Bassmaster.com and in Bassmaster Magazine. All right. Thanks for having us. Yeah.